Hello, Alvaro here, and today I want to talk to you about quantum chemistry. Quantum chemistry is the study of molecules using quantum theory, and it has become one of the most popular applications of quantum computing in recent times. The reason that we are excited about it is that with quantum chemistry we can predict properties of materials, as well as what chemical reactions can happen under certain circumstances. In today's video we are going to learn the basics of quantum chemistry and how to model molecules using penny lane. At school, you may have learned that electrons around atoms occupy certain energy levels, or atomic orbitals. What they may not have told you is that in molecules the exact same thing happens. Electrons also occupy energy levels, known as molecular orbitals. It is the energy of these electrons that determine how these molecules will behave chemically. But if we want to study quantum chemistry using quantum computing, we need to know how to represent these electronic states using qubits. The way that this is done is through the jordan wigner representation. So how does the jordan wigner representation work? Let's see with an example. Suppose that we have three energy levels and that we have at most two electrons per energy level. This is due to the Pauli exclusion principle, which restricts the maximum number of electrons in each level. Since we would have then six electrons, we will write a six qubit state, like this, leaving some free slots, one, two, three, four, five, six, one for each electron. The first two slots represent the first energy level. The second two slots represent the second energy level and the final two, the third energy level. What is the difference between the first and the second slots, for example, in the first energy level? The first slot represents an electron with spin up, and the second slot an electron with spin down. And the same thing for the second and third energy levels. Now, in the slots where there is an electron, we are going to write a one. And in the slots where there is no electron, we are going to write a zero. So for example, we could write something like this. What would this mean? It would mean that there is one electron with spin up in the first energy level and one electron with spin up in the third energy levels. And those are the electrons that we have in our molecule. Can you tell me what this six qubit state represents according to the jordan wigner representation? Pause the video to figure it out. If your answer is that it's one electron in the second energy level with spin up and one electron in the third energy level with spin down, that is correct. You've learned how to represent electronic states using the jordan wigner representation. In order to predict accurately the chemical properties of these molecules, what we need to know are the energy levels occupied by the electrons. In order to do this, we require the aid of an operator known as the Hamiltonian. How do we calculate the Hamiltonian? Well, we need to take into account all the interactions and all the movement of the different particles that compose the molecule. However, the molecule is a relatively big object. There's electrons interacting with electrons, protons with electrons, and so on. So the Hamiltonian is actually complicated to calculate. So what do we do? We do what physicists always do. We do an approximation. The approximation that we do in the case of molecules is known as the Hartree-Fock approximation. Hartree-Fock does two things for us. First, it calculates the molecular geometry, so the positions of where the atomic nuclei are. And with this information, it can do the second thing, which is calculating the Hamiltonian. The Hamiltonian, even with the Hartree-Fock approximation, can be complicated to calculate, but I have good news for you. Penilin can do this for us. Let's see how. Okay, so let's get started. So let's start by importing penny lane as always. So import penny lane as QML. We will also be needing NumPy. So from penny lane, we import the NumPy library as NP. And finally, uh, we are going to be doing quantum chemistry. All the quantum chemistry functionalities in penny lane are done through the QChem library. So from penny lane, we import QCAM, shift enter, and we've imported all the relevant libraries. The next thing that we need to do is to define what molecule we're going to be working with. 
We will be working with H2, which is just a molecule that is made up of two hydrogen atoms bonded together. So to specify this for penylane, we write symbols, which is just a variable, which will be an array that contains the symbols of the atoms that make up the molecule. Press enter, and then we need to tell penylane what the geometry of the molecule is. We will take this information from a database. The hydrogen molecule is just two atoms of hydrogen that are equidistant from a center at 0 0.673 atomic units. So let's tell this to penylane through coordinates, and then we need an NP array. And then we need to specify the X, Y, and Z coordinates for each atom. So the first one will be at minus 0 0.673. And then zeros for the other coordinates. And then the other one will be a plus 0 0.673, and then zeros for the other coordinates. Shift enter, and we have defined our molecule. A nice thing about the QChem library is that it allows us to calculate the molecular Hamiltonian under the hood. So let's define H for our Hamiltonian and qubits for the number of qubits that we will be needing for that Hamiltonian. So all that we need to do is qchem dot molecular Hamiltonian of the symbols and coordinates that we defined before. Then, for example, we can print qubits, and we will see that we need four qubits to model an H2 molecule. We can also print H to see how it looks like. If we print it, we see that we get this very, very long thing, which would be painful to calculate by hand. So thank goodness that we have the QChem library. So now as an example, let's build a quantum circuit that calculates the expectation value of the energy for an electronic state in the jordan Wigner representation. So to do this, let's define the number of wires that our circuit will take, which will be num wires, which is just the number of qubits that we have in our Hamiltonian. Then we need to define a quantum device. So we define dev is equal to qml.device. We will simply use a default qubit device. So default.qubit. And then the number of wires in this device will just be num wires. Now we put our header, we build our Q node with this device. And let's define our circuit. Our circuit will be, let's call it exp energy or expectation value of the energy. And it will take as input a state, which will be represented in the Jordan Wigner representation as a Python array. Now we need to prepare this state. So we do this through the function qml.basis state. And then we put np array. This function takes an np array. So let's just make sure that we are transforming whatever array we put in into an NP array. And this will act on all the wires. So wires is equal to range num wires. And we are going to return the expectation value of the energy, that is the expectation value of the Hamiltonian. So we need to return a QML X val of H. So now let us see what this function returns for some states in the jordan Wigner representation. So we could write, for example, um, exp energy of a state that has one electron in the first energy level and one electron in the second energy level, both with spin up. And we get an energy of minus 0 0.49. So this state is not really the state with the lowest possible energy. Such a state is known as the ground state, or in the case of the Hartree-Fock approximation, it is known as the Hartree-Fock state. Penilin can calculate this state for us using qchem dot hf underscore state. And then we have to specify the number of electrons. So for a neutral hydrogen atom, we need two electrons. And then the number of orbitals which is four, so it's equal to the number of qubits, just because orbitals here means spin orbitals, which is different from molecular orbitals. There's just one spin orbital per 
possible electron that you could have. Shift Enter, and we've defined our Hartree-Fox state. So now, if we calculate the expectation value of the energy for this Hartree-Fox state, we get an energy that is lower than the state that we had before. So we've learned two things. First, we've learned how to represent molecular electronic states using the jordan wigner representation so that we can use quantum computing in order to study quantum chemistry. The second is how to use penny lane to, given the configuration of a molecule given to us by the Hartree-Fock approximation, write the Hamiltonian that describes that molecule and predict, for example, values for the energies. The not so good news about this is that the Hartree-Fock approximation is not accurate enough to tell us exactly what happens in a chemical reaction. In order to predict chemical reactions accurately, we need something more. We need to apply something that is called post-Hartree-Fock methods, such as VQE. Take a look at the description in order to find links to tutorials that touch upon this topic. Do give us a thumbs up if you found this video useful and subscribe for more quantum computing content. Thank you for watching.